It's been about eight months now since I started living in the Lotus Bell tent, and I figured it was about time to give you an update on how it's actually been going. So, let's talk Bell tent living. One of the things that I love most about this living space is that it's so close to nature. When I fall asleep at night, I can hear bird song, which just echoes throughout the valley, and it's absolutely magical. On the flip side of that, one of the downsides to living here is also that I'm so close to nature. The seasons, the weather, all of that, I feel so much more strongly when I'm actually living in a tent, and I'm really only separated to the outside world by canvas. So in times, that can be really magical, and sometimes as well, it can also make living quite hard. I absolutely adore that all of my energy that I'm consuming comes from the sun. It was a huge experiment when I started this project to try and live off of a single 150 watt solar panel and I was actually personally skeptical that it would be enough. But in fact the solar system has been more than adequate and save for one or two days when it had been really cloudy and I hadn't been generating a lot of power. I've really had no issues with keeping all of my devices charged. That's really just because I've been careful with my consumption and because I've chosen to use really energy efficient appliances in the house. It has been a love-hate relationship with my outdoor bathroom. On a beautiful day, it's actually been really gorgeous to use, especially that shower, which is really hot and gets really lovely water pressure but it is an outdoor toilet. So there has been days here when it's been really stormy, really rainy, when actually leaving the tent to go and use the toilet wasn't such a pleasure. The rope bridge was immediately one of my absolute favorite features of this tent. And for the vast majority of the time, it's been absolutely fantastic. But there were actually a couple of weeks just after Christmas where I had a leg injury and actually being able to cross that bridge wasn't really practical. So again, it was something that was a really fantastic, really novel idea. I love it, it made the whole space really adventurous, but it's again something which is maybe not so practical for a really long-term living situation. The fire in the tent is absolutely gorgeous. When it's lit, it just makes the whole place really feel so homely. But it's not really a fantastic heating option when it comes to this kind of living situation. Why? Because there is absolutely no insulation in the tent which means that as soon as the fire dies down, the tent gets really cold. So if you were considering this kind of living setup for the long term, I think it's really important that you find a highly effective insulation solution because otherwise it's just gonna to be too cold. Here at the tent, I live on a really remote property. There are always friendly faces around, people that are able to look over the tent and make sure that everything's okay. But in saying that, there really is no good security option for this tent. If someone wanted to get in, there's no question about it that it wouldn't be very difficult. So that has meant because I have very valuable equipment, things like all of my film gear, my laptop, it means that I haven't really been comfortable leaving that here when I'm not at the tent. So I always do carry out my most valuable expensive items with me, which has been a little bit of a task. So I think if I didn't have those objects, then it really wouldn't be such a concern. And as I say, like I have actually got other items of value which I've left in the tent. In eight months, I've never had any problems. But certainly, if you're really concerned about security, if you have high value items that you really need to look after, then you'd have to find a much better way of being able to secure those for the long term. One of the difficulties of this setup is actually the distance from my tent to the road where I'm parking my car. The terrain pretty much means that it's very difficult for me to get my car anywhere close to where this tent is. So I have quite a long walk to get to my home. What that really means is that if the weather's bad, I'm having to walk through wet grass and mud to get home. Or if it's bad in the morning, I have to walk through wet grass and mud to get to my car. What that meant for a while is that I was even keeping my clean clothes in my car and then having to put on rough clothes to get home or to get back to my car. So again, that's something which isn't really to do with living in the tent. That's something which is an isolated problem to the area where I've chosen to build my home. But uh, it's certainly something that you want to think about is, is the practicality of getting to and from your living space. Cooking here at the Lotus has been really incredible. It's definitely been a challenge at times, especially when I was solely trying to cook on my wood stove. I think I had a really romantic idea about that at the start, that I would be able to get up in the morning and light the fire and heat my water. 
but it didn't take long before the practicality of that actually really became quite arduous. So in the end for my cooking and everything, I did end up getting a barbecue, which really made life a lot simpler. I run my own small business and this is the first living setup that I've ever had where I don't have access to the internet. In the beginning, I thought that that was actually going to be a really difficult thing. But what it means is that I have access to the internet outside of the tent. So I can go to a friend's house or I can go to an internet cafe or a cafe and have access there. And that's actually turned into a really good thing for my work habits because it means when I'm here, I am forcibly disconnected. I can actually really concentrate on my editing work or on my writing work and I'm not finding myself on Facebook subconsciously five minutes later. So that's actually turned into a really good thing. Also, it means that I control the times when I work here. When I had constant access to the internet, I could find myself working at two, three o'clock in the morning, really unable to switch off. When I'm here, I'm disconnected. I have to be able to switch off. When it gets dark, I'm living by candlelight. I get tired earlier on, and I just find myself actually naturally fitting into much healthier cycles, and that's been really special. A Lotus Bell tent is designed as a festival tent. It's designed as a glamping tent. And for that, it's absolutely fantastic. What I'm doing here is really actually pushing the boundaries of what this tent was really designed for. And I'm not using it in a way that it's meant to be used. It is a canvas tent. And I had a situation where over the Christmas period, I was away for a number of weeks. The tent was left all closed up and we had a really, really rainy season this summer. So because of the hot, humid, rainy conditions, mold spores have started to develop on the roof. So that is definitely an issue as well that needs to be addressed. If you're gonna be keeping this up in an extended period of time, you really have to look into the treatment options that are available. So giving it a good solid mold treatment as soon as those spores appear, and then once it's treated, being able to apply a secondary waterproofing treatment to really make sure that your tent is looked after. So again, this kind of living situation, you can't just put up a canvas tent in the forest and expect it to look after itself. It requires maintenance and it requires a little bit of love. There's no question about it that living in this kind of environment really has its challenges, but I am so glad that I've experienced it. Despite all of those challenges, I've had the most wonderful times here, the most incredible gatherings with my friends. It's the most serene and beautiful location. And living here, I've felt so connected to nature, so a part of the outside world. And it really has become a place where I can come home, where I can play music, where I can create, where I can really be myself. And that is just an incredible feeling. My time here in the Lotus has been a really wonderful experience for me and it's something that I wouldn't change for anything. Do I think that this is a way of living that I would recommend to other people? Well, I think it really comes down to your own personal comfort level and what you need to be happy in a living space. Personally, although I've really enjoyed my time here, it's not a long-term solution for me. I think that these tents are absolutely wonderful for what they're designed for, which is festival tents, glamping tents. But for a long-term living scenario, there's a lot of compromise that I've found here. And it's something that, although it's been a wonderful experience, I wouldn't want to see myself doing for years and years on end. I think that if you did want to consider this as a long-term living situation, then it could be done, and it could be done really well, but you would need to make some important modifications. The number one modification that I would see you make is find a way to insulate your tent. You have to be able to stay warm and keep that warmth in the tent, otherwise it's gonna be really difficult. All that being said, I know that I'm really gonna be able to look back on this experience always and be really glad that it's something that I did, something that I gave a shot, and it's an experience that is really wonderful to have had. Still, I'm really excited for what comes next, which is living in my tiny house. <laughs>